Hi. In this video, I'd like to cover a basic subject of how to recognize the current user uh, that's using the database. Uh, this can be used for security. This can be used when um, trying to simplify entry in forms, so it automatically recognizes the current user and fills in a certain field um, and things along those lines. So um, uh, let's dive in. Let's see how this is done. There are a multitude of ways of doing this. I'm going to cover a whole bunch and then we'll narrow down to what I consider probably the one or two best approaches and you can decide for yourself. So let's take a look at how we can recognize our users through some very basic VBA code. Well, to start off this conversation, I'm going to direct you to my article on the subject. Here you go, VBA, recognize users, um, and historically we, you know, get the username. Um, and as you can see here, these are the different approaches I'm going to be discussing today. Uh, using environment variables, uh, very, uh, the W script approaches, there's two of them, uh, WMI, uh, API, and PowerShell. And the article covers each one of them in depth, gives you the code that you can use, and, well, you can be the judge as to which one you want to use. So basically what I've done is I created a database in which I copied each of those code blocks. In some cases, I created a function around the code block just then it could be reusable and I could just call it. But if we open up the database, it's very simple, very straightforward. I created a module per approach. And let's start off from simplest to perhaps more complex. Um, but the number one approach that I see quite often mentioned in various forums is you can use the environ uh, function. And with it, you can get a variety of information. Um, so I'll just show you very quickly here how we get the username, for instance. So let me bring this up a little bit. Um, as you can see, I'm going to call my function. I'm going to tell it with the variable, the input variable I'm looking for is username. So I can press enter and I get it instantaneously. So it is fast. And as you're going to see, it also has access to different variables. So it also has the computer name, for instance. The downside here and why I put here in big, uh, co the comment at the very top is it is insecure. It is not recommended. And the reason behind that is it can be spoofed via DOS. And let me just show you, if we open up the command prompt and take a look, where it's getting its information from is the environment variables. These are them. So you technically have access to all of this, which, as you can see, computer name is there, and that's what it's getting. And uh, user name is there. You could use it, let's say, to get the user profile. User profile. And you're going to get it. So. All of these variables that are there, and you can check what's on your computer if you go into the command prompt, and all you have to do is type set, and it will list all the existing environment variables. Um, they can be changed. You can change the variable. So someone that's um, you know malicious could alter it temporarily, and then when you run it, you're going to get the wrong value. Um, don't get me wrong. This isn't something that most people will do. But nevertheless, it can be spoofed. And there are other approaches that, well, can't be or are much more complex to spoof. So why take the risk? Don't even open that door. So yes, it works. It's fast. You shouldn't use it. Um, then the next one, the W script approaches. Okay, so W script. There are two ways of going about it. You've got the W script shell which is here, W ship scroll. And then the other one is the W script network. Okay. So I created a wrap around what I have on the website. But if we take it and we put it, you'll see you get Daniel, no problem. And similarly, if we use the network approach and we run it, we get the same value, no problem. Once again, though, the shell approach is using the environment string variable. It's using the same thing as the environ function. So I don't recommend it. Um, so once again, I, I tell you, if you're going to go this route for a single line of code, use the W script network. Uh, 
Th this I have no problem saying use this one. And now in basically one simple line, you can get that username value in a heartbeat. The following one would be the WMI. Well, WMI is more complex. Okay, we've got a query, the logon sessions, we got to use the associator to go get the name of the users, and then we build up a dictionary in case more than one person is currently logged on to the system. And then we have to create a test routine to iterate over them. Now, typically, you're going to only have one name, right? But with WMI, it's slightly more complex. But as you can see, you can run it and you will get the value. I just think it's a little too convoluted for typically the goal, the end goal here that most access developers or even, you know, VBA developers have. And let's not kid ourselves here. Everything I'm talking about today is VBA. It isn't access specific. So this will work in Excel and Word, PowerPoint, whatever the case may be. So um, it's just, it's a lot of code. It's slightly slower um, and more convoluted. So it works, but probably not my number one choice. Then we move on to the API. Now the API, as I've left here, and it originally came from the Access Web website. Uh, all I've done in reality is I made it so it would work on 64-bit by adding the PTR safe, and that's it, okay? And you can use it to get the value in a heartbeat. It works well, can't be spoofed. Um, no, no issue recommending this one. And, and like I say, it works both 32-bit and 64-bit. So another great option. And that brings us to our last one, which is PowerShell. I have a whole article about PowerShell, how you can run commands. And in this case, I'm using the function, the get output function that I developed. And then I use it here to simply call this PowerShell command. So that's all it is in PowerShell to get a username. And if we were to run it, you'll see that it works. But it's slow. So that's my main thing with PowerShell. PowerShell is extremely powerful. It's a great tool. But it's slower for a lot of things. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this because it is a slower approach. So that all being said, we've looked at uh, six different ways of doing this. I think it comes down to personal preference. But in my personal opinion, either you use the WScript network, so this guy here, or you use the API. And truthfully, why go the route of all this code and API and bitness? when you can just do it right here with a single call, a single line. So if it were me, I'd just use the WScript network. Now let's talk about using this in a database. What I recommend is quite simply, I have at the startup of my databases now, you can use a hidden form to store the information. You can use a temp var. Some people use global variables. Some people will even write it to a table. I'm not so big on that. But what I'm telling you is at the startup, run the command, get the value, store it in memory however you like. Um, you know, the hidden form is a great way. Uh, so are temp bars. And once it's stored, then you don't have to call this. Because don't forget, create object, wherever you use create object, it is taxing on the system. This isn't something, this isn't a function I want to call over and over and over and over, okay? Every time the person uh, makes a new entry in, in a form, uh, every time they open a form, things like that. This is something I want to call once and have dynamically accessible to me so that I don't have to keep repeating the create object. So this is a great opportunity for that hidden form or a temp var. And then whenever I need it, I just have to retrieve it and it's done. So, uh, and like I said, this is where you can use it with in conjunction for your security uh, for, let's say, form security. Um, so you can set up a table who has access to which forms. And then with this, you're able to validate who's the current user. 
check against the table. Do they have the right to open this form, report, whatever the case may be? Yes, no, and you act accordingly. You close the form or no, you just let it open. Uh, you can even go more convoluted where you check permissions. Do they have read? Do they have write? Do they have delete permissions? And you activate, deactivate the different form properties, for instance. Um, but all of that to say, you know, always think about optimization when you're using these things. These, you, as much as possible, things like this where you're getting computer name, you're getting username, you want to check, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, the IP address, whatever the case may be. You don't want to be doing these calls over and over and over. So do it once, get the value, store it, and then you just have to read it back or retrieve it however you're working. And it's much simpler than always having to go back to this function. If you want, we can do a very quick demo just because I know some people sometimes find I go a little fast or I, I give certain ideas without concrete examples. So let's just very quickly, we'll, we'll create a, modro, uh, a macro, excuse me. And we'll do, um, we'll do a run, run code. And I always typically do a startup function. And we'll call it auto exec. And obviously you could also have a startup form and run it through the startup forms open event or something like that. But I'm gonna use an auto exec macro. And then if we come back into the VBA code, I will just simply call create a module startup. And I do this quite often. This is usually how I operate. And here I'll do a public. It has to be a function startup. And what I can do here, just create a temp bar. So we can do temp vars. We'll call it username. Um, and we can set it to our W script network. It works well. So we'll just do that. Okay. And then what we can do, we're going to keep this simple today, but we could have, let's say, a form. Okay. And what we'll do is we're going to do on the open. We're going to come here and we're going to say if, and just to make our life simple, we can copy paste it. If my temp var equals uh, Daniel, then else and if. And in reality, let's say if it's not equal to Daniel. There, that makes more sense. What we'll do here is we'll come here and we're going to do cancel. We're going to make it equal to true. We're canceling the open. So only Daniel is allowed to open that form. And what we can do is we can be polite about it. And you are not authorized to open this form. And, you, you know, you can get into much more informative. You can get into, uh, you know, please contact your database administrator or whatever you'd like. But you get the idea. So we've got a form. Now, this is all based on the auto exec having ran. So to do that, we're just going to do a compact and repair. And if I open the form, you will see that it opens. Now, let's go back into it and let's change this to Fred. Now, when I launch it, I get you are not authorized. Because my user ID that I'm currently logged in with is not. Well, let's see what happened at the auto exec when it ran. It retrieved the value of Daniel, which is, in fact, the current, the, the right username, right? Because we had tested earlier, my username is Daniel. So as you can see, you can use it. And now it's only a temp var. I'm no longer calling my W script. I'm just going to be retrieving the value by using the temp var over and over wherever I need to use it for security purposes or otherwise. You can just as easily, let's just say in the form, you know, someone could have here uh, in the various controls for the fields that you've got, you know, who, who entered the, the entry 
well, entry made by, and this could be a field in your table. And what you could do is you could have a default value equal to, oops, equal to the temp bar. So if we come back here and switch it back to Daniel, so I can actually access the form, and we test it out, not only is it my security, but it can even default values in fields for me. And you could disable this, send people, it's being logged, but people can't go and edit it and pretend to be someone else. So you can use this in a multitude of different ways. Um, you can control security. That's one of the reasons I use it in reality is I use this recognize user. So uh, I can even avoid logon. Um, you know, you can have it set up that it automatically recognizes someone at logon. So they don't have to type in what their username is. And maybe all they need to do is provide the password to open it. But you know how a lot of places you have a username and then a password. Well, you can bypass the username. Uh, that means they can't impersonate someone else, even if they have the password. Anyway, just showing you a couple options here. As you see, you can use it for security for sure, logging into the database, period. Accessing individual objects, forms, and reports. You can use it to default field values. And like I showed you, we're talking about here using the, um, the username, but I had also demonstrated that you can use it to get other things. So right now we're doing username. We could just as easily here, let me just demonstrate. Um, we could also have done the network offers different ones. We could have done computer name here as well. Okay, so you can access other information similarly to what we've done here for username. So just be aware of that. That, that basically covers the subject uh, quite well, I think. You guys be the judge as to which approach you prefer. Uh, for me, I think now with the experience I have, this is the guy I'd use. It's the simplest and it works effectively. Just keeping in mind though that I'm going to do it once at the startup, the auto exec or my startup form or something along those lines. And then I can be sure that I don't have to call it over and over after that. So I just store it in a hidden form, a temp var, a global variable, whatever the case may be. And I use that instead of always doing create object over and over and over. Obviously, if this is the only place where I'm using WScript Network, well, then that's going to be what I do. But realistically, in most of my systems, this is also where I'd use a self-healing variable. There's a great opportunity for a self-healing variable here. So then it doesn't keep doing the create object. So something else to consider. I'll give the link for self-healing variables, the article in my YouTube video on that, if you're not familiar. A great opportunity to implement it. Thank you for spending a couple of minutes of your day with me. I uh, hope this has been informative. Drop me a line. Is there a technique you prefer to use? Is there a technique you use that I didn't cover today? Is it, what's the reason? You know, why do you prefer one over the other? I'd love to get some feedback on that. Maybe I'm missing something. Thank you. Like, subscribe, drop me a line below if you don't mind. If you can promote my channel videos in any manner, be greatly appreciated. LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, all those things are glorious if you're in, capable of doing it, uh, creating pay playlists on YouTube. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.